Hi guys, this is Tony, b and Farms, Maple in Freedom, Indiana. And today, uh, we're gonna be taking a look at this old DR brush cutter. Uh, it's a pretty old machine, you can tell by looking at it, it's definitely mowed its share of, of brush and weeds. Uh, it hasn't been run in quite a few years until last year. We got it out at the end of the season, uh, went through the carburetor, it was a mess on the inside, should have replaced the carburetor, but instead we thought, well, we're almost done, we can, we can limp it along. So we put a battery in it, cleaned up the carburetor, got it running, and, and did, did use it. Uh, when we went to get it this spring, however, uh, that's when issues arose. Uh, it started up okay, but it only ran for just a few seconds, started smoking really bad, uh, coughing, sputtering, shut it back off, and I noticed that when I checked the oil, right this over there so you can see it maybe, it's really over full, which tells me there's gasoline in the crankcase. That, that carburetor that I should have replaced has leaked through over the winter and filled the crankcase with gasoline. So, our project today is uh, we're just gonna replace this, this carburetor. So, let's get in there and see what we can find. First things first, I'm gonna take the air cleaner off just unsnaps on each side, remove that, take the element out, there we go. This air cleaner housing is held on with two screws here and here, and these two nuts up here at the top. So we'll start with the screws on the sides, take those off, actually loosen that one. Get in here where I can see that one. Loosen it. That should be good. And it looks like these are going to be a 10 millimeter. This is a 17 horse Kawasaki engine. The fasteners will be metric on it. So, we'll get a 10 millimeter socket right there. And our nut driver. Remove these nuts. Be aware that there are a couple lock washers in here and a metal plate. So I want to drop those if we can help it. So we're just going to try and work that out. There's those two washers, they come out. It's perfect. Pull that off. We've got this hose right here. This is the PCV hose. Just, it just pops out. Set that off to the side. And there is our leaking carburetor. Now the same two nuts that held the air cleaner box on are what holds the carburetor on. So you can see that it's, it's loose in here. So our job then is to try to get it, get it unhooked. We're probably going to need to remove the blower housing and this guard before we can get to that. So, come up to the top, take these acorn nuts off. down. We've got this brush screen. Take it off also. Underneath here, sometimes there are spacers that have to go on to keep this brush screen from dragging on the plastic when the engine runs. So you want to watch for those. We'll see if there's any on this one wasp nest. Probably don't need that in there. Here it is. This is that spacer I was telling you about. Don't lose that. Otherwise, this will drag on the plastic. It makes a terrible racket. I speak from experience here. 
All right, so we've got that off. Now we've got some bolts that secure the cover. Two here, two just like it on the other side. We're gonna remove those. Actually, I think we can just loosen those. I believe they're slotted. Let's see. We'll back them off and find out. got a vent line that runs down just to vent carburetor gases away from the engine. We'll just slide that off, free it up. Should be a fuel line right here coming from the fuel pump. Need to get that off. Use a pair of pliers for that. Loosen the clamp, just slide it back. Rotate the fuel line gently, pull it off. go kind of tuck that out of the way time being we've got two linkage rods one for our choke and one for the throttle I'm hoping that we can slide this off of these studs and then take those free without having to take anything off and it looks like we can so we'll undo the throttle linkage it also has a spring this long spring that goes in the same same hole with it this is to keep slack out of the throttle linkage, so don't, don't lose the spring, it is important. The choke lever comes off right like that. And there we go, our carburetor. We have our replacement carburetor right here, ready to go. So it should just be a simple matter of swapping it back on there. Do need a couple of gaskets. Should be right here in this package. If I can get it open. One up there, like that. Take our carburetor, hook our choke rod back up. All I'm doing is just rotating the carburetor body. It's got a Z bend in each one of these rods, right like that. And our spring, this can be awkward sometimes, we'll see. It is. There's room for it, but you just got to get everything just right. There it goes. So we'll take it back up, slide it on the studs, push it up against. Perfect. So we will take our vent tube, and it runs down through a hole in this bracket right there to hold it away from the muffler. Hook it back up, right like that. Get our fuel line, bring it around, hook it up. Pliers could be a little wider. Slide that clamp up, maybe. There we go. take our other gasket you can see that it's meant to go this little hole lines up right right there fits on get our air filter housing into the back of the housing. It sits right up against it like that. 
reinstall our nuts and those lock washers that we were careful not to lose. Get them started. going to snug those for now because we still have the two on the sides that we want to make sure and get started right down here and tighten those. We're gonna tighten these back up. We had to loosen them to get the screws on the outside of the air box tightened up. Tighten those nuts back. That's good. Okay, so we can take our air filter, put it back in. Got a pre-filter in this air filter housing. Just gonna fire. Just gonna take it, set it right in those on those sharp points. That'll hold it. Put this back up here. Up our latches. All right, and we're ready to go back together with this. So we'll take our cover. It just drops right down from the top. Engage. There we go. Tighten those four bolts that we loosen. <clears throat> that one's pretty tight. Try a wrench on that. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to take that spacer, make sure we don't forget that, lay it right on top, line it up, take our screen, just set it over best we can, take these four bolts, start down in there, actually three bolts, start down in there. Snug those. Now, I want to recommend you do something else right here. Uh, we should be able to put that on. Everything should be fine. But before we do, let's rotate this engine by hand and make sure that this screen is not dragging on this cover. It is not. All right, we're good. Take this. Put our acorn nuts back on. Okay, that completes the carburetor installation, but we still have the issue of the crankcase being overfilled with gasoline. We've got to get that out, We've got to change the oil, the oil filter. So uh, let's get set up for that. We'll be right back. In the oil, we're just using some scrap CPVC and an elbow, hopefully, uh, to route that oil away into the pan. 
Uh, on a Kawasaki, on this particular one, it's got a quick release oil drain. Just takes a 10 millimeter wrench. You loosen it. I want to put this on here. Should be able to just loosen it up and have the oil come out. Definitely a little thin. It's got some gas in it, sure enough. I can smell it. So we'll get that out of there. I've seen it worse. I've seen them fill up so bad that it just shot out of there like water. So this is not as bad as it could be, so that's good. In the meantime, let's we'll see if we can get this oil filter off here. Rag under there. Get our filter pliers. Yeah, that's that's really on there. Fair enough. <clears throat> there it goes. You guys at home, there's no reason for an oil filter to be that tight. That's just crazy. Got a replacement filter. A little oil on the O-ring just to help it seal. Oh, make sure it's down in there. Goodness. Wow. There we go. Got it nice and even. just going to put it hand tight. <clears throat> Doesn't need to be any tighter than that. Check our oil on a Kawasaki. You do not thread the dipstick in to check the oil. You just set it on top of the threads, pull it back out. There's still some in there. Quite a bit in there. So we wait. Oil is finished draining. We can remove all of this. Get a little bit of a mess, not too bad. Pop that up. Tighten our drain plug. Don't want to forget that plastic so you don't have to be too aggressive when you tighten it again it doesn't have to be torqued down like you're gonna lift off of it just snug is fine move this out of the way Jeez. time to add our oil we're going to use straight 30 weight 10w30 would be okay too 
summer, we're going to go with a straight weight. should hold one quart easy enough, probably around a quart and a half, I'm guessing. Probably need to put some in it, start it, let it fill the oil filter, and then check it again. start it, let it run a little bit. Hopefully it will start. Move everything off. Now, there's one thing that you need to be aware of. Sometimes when these engines fill the crankcase with gas like this one did, it will rise up to a level where that diluted oil will actually get in the muffler, in the exhaust system. In which case, when they start, uh, it's got to burn all that oil and, and gasoline out and they, they smoke terribly. You don't know if it's happened, you never know until you start it up. It's just something to watch for and, and be ready for. Uh, if it's in there, we'll know pretty soon. So uh, let's see if it'll start. Pivot it around a little bit. Choke. smoother check our oil one more time and we're good to go all I did there was just reach down through this hole that's what it's there for on top of the housing and you can see the carburetor adjusting screw I just turned it counterclockwise as far as it would go, richened up the idle mixture, the engine smoothed right out. So it's going to be a good, good running carburetor, I believe. We will check our oil one more time. We're good. That's it. It's ready to go to work. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hit that like button. Subscribe for us if you like. That would help us out a bunch. See you next time.